Hey folks, today we've got a hot topic to unpack together. There's this missile everyone's been talking about everywhere lately. It's Russian in origin, but Iran's name is now involved. Stick around, cause this story's just getting started right now. So there's a system called Oreshnik, a Russian-made missile. It made headlines during attacks in Ukraine big time. Now people say Iran might be building something similar, but what's the truth? Can it even happen realistically? Iran already has tons of missile experience under its belt. From Shahab to Khorramshahr, it's walked a long road. Now it seems they're eyeing something inspired by Oreshnik. Not a direct copy, but a homegrown variant maybe. If that happens, trust me, a lot will change. Especially in the region, countries won't just sit quietly. Oreshnik isn't just another missile, it's much more. Let's break down its tech specs right now, step by step. This missile falls under the medium-range ballistic missile category. That means it can strike targets 2 to 3,000 kilometers. Of course, the exact range depends on its engine build. But either way, it's got massive coverage for the region. One thing everyone talks about is its ridiculous high speed. Oreshnik can reportedly go faster than Mach 10 easily. That makes it insanely hard to intercept with current systems. For air defense crews, this becomes a living nightmare. Another highlight is its potential multi-warhead capability, seriously dangerous. That means it could launch multiple payloads in one strike. Each warhead can then hit a different target precisely. This allows simultaneous damage across several points very efficiently. To pull that off, guidance has to be near perfect. It likely uses both GPS and inertial nav to steer. If Iran manages similar accuracy, it'd be a game changer. Because precision has always been a technical barrier so far. The body's probably made of lightweight and radar-evading composites. That helps reduce detection and keeps the whole missile faster. Its aerodynamic shape also delays radar lock-on during flight, which means enemies get less time to react or counter. Now, imagine Iran successfully develops something in this same class. The first effect would be boosting its regional deterrence posture neighboring states would instantly raise their defense spending like crazy. A new arms race could quietly start all over again. At the same time, diplomacy might return to the table, because no one wants regional balance shifting too quickly. Still, building an Iranian Oreshnik would be a huge achievement, especially if it carried multiple warheads and accurate targeting systems. This type of weapon needs real infrastructure and deep know-how. You need advanced fuel, navigation systems, hardened launch platforms too. There's no shortcut. It takes years of focused work. It's not a garage project. It's a national effort. Sanctions obviously make things more complicated. Let's not ignore that. But Iran's proven it can innovate under pressure and limitations. Reverse engineering plays a huge role in their development path, especially when defensive deterrence becomes a strategic top priority internally. Building something like Oreshnik isn't copying, it's adapting intelligently. Think of it as using a blueprint and making it yours. It's what many countries do in aerospace and military tech. The name changes, the tech spirit often carries forward. If Iran makes its version, they'll probably rename it too. Something like Sigil Novin or some other symbolic new branding approach. But name aside, what matters is field performance, nothing else. And that performance could shake up the regional balance hard. Countries like Israel, Turkey and Saudi Arabia would definitely feel concerned. Because this missile's reach 
easily spans the entire Middle East. Key military bases and infrastructure would be within its zone. That's real pressure, and it changes everyone's defensive calculations fast. That's exactly why everyone's watching this program so closely now. Even if it's not confirmed, it's being tracked constantly. We as analysts need to stay calm and informed always. No drama, no fear, just pure military logic and facts. If Iran builds this, it sends a serious global signal. Not just about defense, but deep military design capability. That's a major step into strategic weapons innovation territory. And that's not a small thing in geopolitics, trust me. Of course, that brings responsibility and global attention as well. Diplomatic talks, restrictions, resolutions, they're all possible follow-ups here. This isn't just science, it's politics, timing, and media. So managing perception becomes just as vital as engineering. We're not here for hype, we're here for clarity. This channel breaks down complex threats into clear human language. If it sounds scary, breathe. Information beats fear every time. You deserve to understand these developments without panic or noise. If you appreciate calm, honest, tech-based analysis like this, hit that subscribe button too. We'll keep you updated as new info comes out globally. We break it first, and we break it down simply. Now, I want to hear from you. Seriously, let's talk. What if Iran really builds this? How would it affect you? Drop your thoughts below. Your opinion truly matters here. This is a two-way convo, not a one-sided lecture ever. Let's also consider, is this a threat or opportunity? Will other nations respond with tech or diplomacy? or both? Or will everything remain quiet under the radar for now? We'll follow the story either way and keep it real. Today we dug deep into one of the hottest missile topics. We covered design, effects, regional reactions, and realistic implications too. Hopefully you walked away smarter, calmer, and better informed overall. Thanks for sticking around. Your time here means everything, truly. If this added value, drop a like, it helps tons. And remember to subscribe, the next videos are coming fast. We've got more tech breakdowns, news and strategy on deck. Until then, stay sharp, stay smart and peace out.